whether the, the president want military men to fill that position. Because what normally happens is that they have a core a person who has experience. They put another techno crowd behind for to administrative yeah, for administrative purposes. Well, uh, with due respect, he has not impressed me. Uh, I must tell you the truth. With what we have seen today, even they have no question to ask him. All he was telling us is about Bangladesh and Sudan and Darfur and all. He was giving background to uh, where he has trained so that you know that he has not been uh, all here. Well, he, 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 uh, even that is not enough. He has not convinced me. If I'm in the Senate, uh, I will not uh, clear him for any any appointment at all, even if he's the chief executive for the president. He's not articulate. This country is very sophisticated. We need quality leadership now. That's what we are promised. So you don't get people on the basis of just patronage of where he comes from or because he was chief uh, security officer at the APC campaign. Those are the only things I had. I don't see any ministerial profile and pedigree in the last uh, nominee. I must tell you the truth. I, 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 I am, no matter what ministry you are talking about, he doesn't fit in. Uh, of course, I, 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 many Nigerians will disagree with you that somebody has risen to the rank of uh, a general in the army, having gotten all the trainings that he said he has gotten all over uh, the world, then he should be able to face the issue of, uh, you know, in, in any portfolio he will be given. But let, let's go to, uh, we have Pastor Usani Uguru uh, on the the, 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 the microphone now. Let's see if uh, uh, that's where we are going to go. At least the last on the ministerial uh, nominees to be screened today. Let's see if we are there already. She said that she has Chief Whip. Distinguished Senators. Please settle down. Distinguished senators, please settle down. Our revered minority leader, please have your seat. Or you can defect to the greatest party in Africa. If you are carrying your duty with bias, can you look to your left? Distinguished senator Olure Mishade Tinumbu. Will you take your seat? No, she was sitting on it. The single senator, Ashiwaju Jagaban, as uh, <laughs> leader and Dume will say, the senior president said I should tell you to go to your seat. Uh, Chief, Chief Whip of the Senate. Uh, I will not say what I Chief Whip of the Senate. No, you rule correctly, sir. You yes. just wanted my attention to the right place. Okay. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. We have before us the last nominee for today, Pastor Sanya Sanya Uguru. You are welcome. Yeah, grab your CV, and um, I want you to give a brief introduction of yourself. Please, there's no need to go to your CV in detail. We already have that. If there's anything in your CV that you have not, that has been omitted, or there's something in your CV that you want to emphasize, go ahead and do that. Distinguished, distinguished colleagues, uh, I know it's been a... It's been a long day. Please let us just bear through this last uh, nominee. Uh, thank you. This thing, go ahead, Mr. Nominee. Your Excellency, the Senate President. Your Excellency, the Deputy Senate President. Principal Officers of the Distinguished Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Principal Leaders respectfully of your various committees as shall soon come. It is my pleasure to present myself to this Hallow Chambers for the necessary in view of what's expected by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. My name is Usani Ugu Usani. I was born 54 years, nine months ago. I have gone through 
uh, different levels of scholarship, primary to tertiary. And of course, the Senate President beats that uh, since I have only to talk about what is not on my CV, and you have it, I don't need to emphasize on my qualifications. I have done some things in terms of community development and participation. I was the chairman governing board of the secondary school of my community. I liaise also between my community and the state government for the provision of rural electrification in my community. I have taken part as a member of the advisory council of my traditional leadership council. That's about that. I have also played a role in the development of rural communities when I was Commissioner for Agriculture in the sense that I made sure accruals from the estates or plantations that were being hosted by the communities were developed in terms of infrastructure by the uh, sums or the financial accruals from those plantations. Uh, prominently, I was one of the few persons invited to make a conference presentation at the 100 years of existence of sociology department at the University of Liverpool in the United Kingdom. I think beyond this point, whatever else you read it from my CV. And I come, under, I come here under the goodwill of the former president of Senate, Dr. Wyas, who says he should have been here with me, but for his health, Musa Adede, who is out of the country, Senator Basio too, and I'm led here by Senator M. Timbu. I thank you very much. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry. A very serious oversight. My senators, please, I'm sorry. Um, my three senators of my state are people with whom we've traveled the political space of the Cross River. May God forbid. Uh, for the past 13 to 25 years, Senator Waino, Senator Rosoko, and Senator Geshe Mbasi. Beyond this point, His Excellency Alaji Kwan Kwan So is one of my political mentors in the APC. Uh, Senator Panabas Gemade is a man I will call a father. He has mentored me equally. Senator Nazif is a friend who has also walked and traversed this country with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Senate President, my distinguished uh, colleagues, Senator Benga Chapa representing Lagos East, Senatorial District, and, and it's good that the Senate President intervened by stopping the pastor, Mr. Nomini, because he could have mentioned my name too, since he was coming. I have two questions for you, and these questions relate to the problems that we are having in all parts of Nigeria now. Before now, the issue of kidnapping was restricted to a particular region of Nigeria. Nowadays, you find kidnappers taking their hostages and asking for as little as 50,000, 25,000. And this is happening all over Nigeria. What do you think will be the solution to this, particularly when we know with your background, you may likely be confirmed to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What kind of advice, programs, or policies would you advise, I mean, would you give to uh, this government? That's number one. Number two, this second question too, 
relate to the intra-community activities of our federation. And we don't seem to take it as something very, very important. That is intercommunal crisis as far as boundaries are concerned. With your background, being in government from the age of 24 up till now and all the qualifications and your past achievements together with your calling, that is the pastoral calling, what solutions do you have to this intercommunal crisis regarding boundary issues within the Federation? In conclusion, I am sure by the time you are leaving this place, it is a general request that you pray for our country, pray for our Senate, pray for the people of Nigeria so that they can move forward. Thank you and God bless. Um, Senator Major Broker. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Mr. Romini, my name is Ahmad Abubakar Mandek from the Mahal South. Mr. Romini, my question is centered on about <coughs> environmental degradation. Because I see you, I see you about environment. In your CV, you have written much about the environment. So, you know, the environment reality is the, in the northeast, we have to provide environmental control. The receiving of a child raising, you know, human education and social uh, question in the people. The human poverty index in the area, mostly, you know, can be the environment and also the insurgency as it is now. Because there is a the chat daisy as we see this so much. And because of that so definitely the environment is affected as it also affects your area. What policies are you going to enhance in the federal cabinet if you have made a minister to take care of the environmental factor in Nigeria, especially in the northeast and in the uh, south south. Senator Samigo. It's a point of order, sir. Uh, our nominee, congratulations. Yeah, uh, my name is. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm coming under order 14. Order 14A. Privileges. That privileges are the rights enjoyed by the Senate collectively and by the members of the Senate individually, conferred by the military housing powers and privileges act that two o eight laws of the Federation nineteen ninety and other statutes or by practice president Mr. Jefferson, the chairman will permit me. We as a member of this red chamber utilize their privilege. The, I will be requesting the nominee to apologize to the rest of us here because looking at the city, he was a member of the governing board of the Nigerian Copyright Commission 2001 to 2004. And I know that the Nigerian Copyright Commission was considered by the government of the PDP that took power, that took power in 1990, please, please listen to me, that took power in 1999, and all this country together for 15 years. So for, 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 so for the nominee to stand in front of us, and will, will you ask the student, the student, so for the nominee to stand in front of us, I mentioned names of senators who traverse the political terrain in cross Russia together. And somebody jokingly said, we are, we are under the PDP, he said, God forbid. 
we, we, we take exception to that. But somebody has served under a PDP administration. Yes. But as you can say, I don't think it should be found the PDP by, by coming to stand in front of in front of God to say God forbid. God cannot forbid. God cannot forbid 16 years of leadership in this country, whether they were mistakes or not. God cannot forbid. Mr. Chairman, I'm addressing you because I know that even you as a chairman, you benefited from the PDP as governor of Florida for eight years. And I also benefited from PDP as governor of Florida for eight years. You made you you made your point. You, you, you made your point. Just, just, just sit down. Do do you sit down? You may you come on the front of the weather. Is 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 not of the meaning. Profoundly sorry. <laughs> My name is Dr. My name is Dr. Sam Ebu. I represent. My name is Dr. Sam. Order, please. Order, please. I represent Ebony North Senatorial District. I want to congratulate the pastor for being nominated by Mr. President, especially hearing that the pastor. I also know that the secretary to the government, federal government, is also a pastor of Metro Police, and the vice president, a pastor, a minister of God. We have also interviewed from the Islamic angle, from Islamic scholars here. Knowing also that Mr. President himself is a devout Muslim. What it means, therefore, is that in the cabinet, you are going to have religious men. I want to ask you, therefore, as a pastor, and considering other men of God in the cabinet, what is going to be your role, considering the fact that Nigeria is the only country in Africa where the level of religious intolerance is the highest. We have many countries, even in our sub-region, West Africa, where Christians and Muslims coexist, even from one family. But here in this country, any slightest misunderstanding, brother is against fellow brothers. People are, people are killed, property destroyed. And this has continued for a long time. I'm happy, therefore, that you're going to enter or to be a member of the executive. I'm therefore asking you what role, what would be your advice to the executive, to the government to, in a way to reduce this intolerance that you have witnessed in this country that have led to a lot of, lots of lives. That is my question to you. Senator Bolandale. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues. My name is Senator Fingonada, representing the good people of the state, the second most industrial state as well as the state. Uh, you can see this country has a lot of lawlessness in, on, on the, in the land. It's kind of hopelessness. People are people. Our country, our, our government is a Sometimes fail, and we are government fail to respect internal conventions ratified. Sometimes we fail to honor internal protocol. We also put security. If the government also fail to respect all these honors, how much the citizen? If you are not a member of the cabinet, how can you advise the government to try as much as possible to honor international contracts? Also, to be able to create a conducive environment for investors to have confidence. Because at the moment the government itself fails, the other Nigerians also do not have to follow. So thank you. That's the question.
Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Senator Monsieur Simone, representing the World Central Senatorial District. Mr. Nomini, we have to get us from your CV that you are one of the commissioners of the and sports. A challenge so soon our mission is widespread unemployment. Yet, our universities are producing more graduates every time. What do you think can be done to better prepare our graduates for life post-university and also to ensure that they are better equipped for the job search? I mean, then, and can you please explain what you actually do when you were home the commissioner for youth and sport, what did you do for you? How did you change their lives? Thank you. So, can you speak a bit louder? If you can't, can you repeat the question again? Mm -hmm. But the challenge is facing our mission is widespread unemployment. Yet, our universities are producing more graduates every time. So, I want him to tell us what he will do to prepare this graduates after they finish their university or how we assist them in their job search as one commissioner for youth and sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you very much. The first question talks about kidnapping and intercommunal clashes. The subject of kidnapping we know today is actually a threat to everybody and the entire nation. And when security is threatened, economy is threatened, social life is threatened. So we see it as a very dangerous trend. And I think to advise to stem down the tide of kidnapping, we have to bear in mind certain elements. One of the elements is who are those in kidnapping? What are the reasons for kidnapping? And what are the antidotes put in place so far to address the issue? The first thing is that it is the younger people who are involved in kidnapping. And why is the orientation of the younger people tended towards unethical means of earning a living? One of the issues is that the employment somebody has said. And so some people find it easier to do the untenable for them to earn a living. In that regard, there is something I believe that is very important, which will not only address the issue of kidnapping, but also address other uh, uh, fragments of our social life, which is a moral reorientation. Because at no time in history or life have we found that it is very easy to live and make a successful life. But why is it that in generations past, kidnapping was not an option in Nigeria? It therefore shows there is a derivative between some of the modern practices, one in terms of politics. We find that most of the kidnappers are cultists who are initiated or co-opted, taking the advantage of their idleness because there is no employment. And those who arm these people to be able to kidnap, in most cases, are mentors in one way or the other. So the address is to be the reorientation of we the sponsors of such activities and those that are being sponsored. While government is doing its best to address the cardinal policy of employment for attaining youth full population. In terms of what advice I will give, the advice cannot be a once point wholesome you know, initiative. It means we have to carry out an integrated approach through the churches, through the mosque and other religions, through the schools also, to ensure that our universities are no more grooming grounds for the recruitment of such you know, human beings. And also for us to address the issue of small arms you know, acquisition in homes and by individuals. These are issues that have trajectories to the policy formulations and frameworks that transcend not only the issue of criminal gangs among the youth, but other as aspects of the economy. And I believe each of them demands a careful articulation to be able to address that. In terms of communal clashes, what's that, what, the nature of communal clashes so far, we have found at some point they will be accusing 
a section of people against the other section of the people. Sometimes it comes about boundaries. Beginning from the boundary issue that was raised in this question, we are aware that we have a national boundary commission as well as state boundaries commissions. What this means is for the continuous dialogue concerning the setting out of boundaries. But it appears difficult to be able to say you can solve the problem of clashes going to boundary uh, adjustments or readjustments or disputes. Because all over the world, territories are being annexed and land has always remained a factor of disagreement. But as a nation, if we can take the no possibility of resolutions, which can sometimes suggest that where you have natural causes as indices of dialogue or agreement to set boundaries amongst communities. communities. Again, deriving from the recent issue or current issue prevailing, which comes from grazing, we know that the government used to have policy on grazing fields. Maybe it's to look for a way to reinforce it or provide enough grazing fields for those who depend on that method of farming. So they will no longer clash with others who depend on other forms of you know, terrestrial agriculture. So the conflicts can be reduced. I think that for that question, that is my offer. And of course, you cannot do this without having the technical personnel in these fields to be able to advise and also make interviews based on antecedent occurrences. Senator Amadou talked about environmental degradation and problems and the policies that could enhance environmental remediation. Appreciating environmental problems in Nigeria is a very crucial thing. But we will try as a people, as a government, to appreciate the fact that environmental problems are not things that can be remedied only based on local actions. The reason is that the subjects or objects of environmental degradation are localized, but the effect is globalized. And so to suggest remedies will mean that there has to be a total collaboration, global. The fact of this degradation increasing is on account of the fact that certain major countries in the world have failed to oblige some of the international conventions addressing environmental problems. For instance, United States and China and Australia are recent, have been very reluctant in signing up to the Kyoto Protocol because they know that that will mean them shutting down many of the economic entities. So the only things I think we need to know is that we need more money to carry out the remediation because environmental continue to grow as far as we emphasize economic growth as our own uh, sustain, sustainable factor of national economy. So what I think we need to do is to address all the policies and laws addressing the environment. For instance, I'm aware that um, there is a prescription for assessing global environmental funds. And recently, on just September 30th this year, they closed the you know, uh, bidding for countries and companies that want to access those funds. I do not know whether Nigeria has subscribed to it. But such, what that means is that the nations that are good under what we call Annex 1 countries, which are the advanced countries, are expected to be providing $100 uh, million per annum per country for the Annex 2 group, which is the underdeveloped countries, to access to be able to solve environmental problems. But while this is being done, we should also look at our local considerations. The increase in environmental degradation in various parts of the country have peculiar problems pertaining to local variations. The problems in Niger Delta are not the same as problems in the Northeast, which means there is a need to address each of these ones on the basis of its peculiarity. And so there cannot be a common problem, but there can be a common framework as we have got in the establishment of certain regulatory agencies like the NOSRA and NESRIA to carry out their functions. 
we will therefore try to see that the influence of the environmental abusers is limited by making sure we make provisions for these agencies to carry out their functions of monitoring and remediation effectively instead of depending on the very abusers of the environment. Okay. Well, I have a reason to say my advice will be to get out an effective framework to problems to be handled with peculiarities to the environment. Please add to me if there are questions that have been put before you, have been, if you can give a brief answer to them, not that all. In the ESCO, what uh, and um, the religious intolerance is so high. What advice I will have? Sincerely, I believe that already the government, by the constitution or proposal of the nominees, is on the path of showing an example. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Eina Bariba. I come from and represent the people of Abia South. My point of order is uh, our order room 120, 120. And I can, uh, with your permission, Mr. President, read it. The Senate shall not consider the nomination of any person who has held any public office as contained in part two of the fifth schedule to the constitution prior to his nomination unless there is written evidence that he has declared his assets and liabilities as required by section 11.1 of part one Can I go on, Mr. Order. President? Order. Of part one of the fifth schedule of the federal of the Constitutional of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, such declaration shall be required for scrutiny by the senators. Mr. President, this nominee did not declare his assets. It is not contained in what is before us. No. There is no proof before us that he has declared his assets. Okay. And therefore, Mr. President, according to this rule, Rule 120 of this hallowed chamber, we shall not consider this nominee. Distinguished, dis, distinguished um, Senator, all all the nominees, if you have all submitted their declaration of assets, their security, etc., all these issues, if you want to come and verify, not just him, all the nominees that have come before us. So if you want to come and verify that, you can make it available for you to verify that. But they have been submitted. So I, 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 I note your comments. Go ahead and answer the questions. I, I believe that there's, an, there's, there's a prevailing example already by the inclusion of ministers, both of, of different religions. And our commitment will therefore be one, 
to continue in prayers and two to always advise on the path of dialogue and tolerance and i think it has to also be a matter that we all will take as a nation to prevail on the conscience of either our followers or our mentors or our seniors our communities to see that everybody accepts that as far as nigeria is a conglomeration of muslims and christians and other religions north and south we must have the tolerance to remain as a united country at this point at this point sir i sincerely wish to once again offer my very profound apology to the pdp and the entire senate please thank you very much Distinguished colleague, please. Senator uh, Barra was the one asking a question before the point of order. Just take this question and we can discuss the issue of uh, whether we still want to take him up on more questions. Well, later. Senator Barra, can you quickly? Thank you, Mr. President, for recognizing me. My name is Barra Aizibun. I represent the Lord in this August Senate. Uh, Mr. Nomini. You are, you are an expert in development. Uh, in fact, you are even a PhD student uh, in development studies. You were also a player in the solid mineral sector of this country. Now, I want to ask you, or oh, you know as a fact that the solid mineral industry Unlike what is happening in other clients, other countries of this world, where a subcountry is the mainstream of the economy of uh, several countries. But here, order please. But here, numbers have shown, economic numbers have shown, that the contribution of the solid mineral industry to our overall macroeconomic configuration is nothing to write home about. Please, put the question, please. Okay. Now, if we approve, if this, if this August Senate approves your nomination and you become a minister, how are you going to advise the president, the Federal Judicial Council, on the way to make sure that the solid mineral becomes an important contributor to our macroeconomic uh, setup of this country. That is number one. Number two, we are all aware, I'm sure you are aware to being a player in the solid mineral uh, industry, that the royalty that is supposed to be collected by the Federation of Nigeria from exploitation of the mineral resources of this country is very, very small. In fact, there is no standard means Distinguished, can you put the question, please? So, okay, now, if you become a minister, how are you going to advise Mr. President to have the mechanism where the money, the money from reality that is due to government is duly paid to you? Being aware. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleague, my name is Obinna. Joseph Oba. I represent Ebon Central Zone. Mr. Nomini, I have uh, just two questions for you. One is uh, looking at the CV here. In the space of uh, two years, you have joined three or four political parties. And as a pastor, can you tell us how you managed to connect this? <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Number two, sir. 
if you are cleared by this Holy Chamber and you, are, you become a minister of God, can you tell us what you are going to do to improve the standard of public activities in this country? Bear in mind the record this country has in terms of uh, sports. This is my vision. Thank you. Thank you. The name is Ikanaz. I I have not joined three political parties in four years. I have not joined four parties in three or four years. I from ninety-eight to two thousand and fifteen. But the paper here shows that he's a pastor. And there is no document here to ascertain that. That is number one. Then number two, Mr. Speaker, order of privilege. You are not listening. Order, please. Order, order, please. The senator has the floor. Mr. President, if you look at the last page here, because I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and he's called a pastor, not a mala. What I'm saying, if you look here, the tax clearance here, all the receipts are given the same day, 14th day of October 19, uh, 2015. The same day is here. And this is a serious issue. This is a serious issue as a Senate we need to consider. Because if we begin to shout no, no, no on serious issues that are fundamental, then we continue to shout no, no. When important issues are raised, let's discuss it as a Senate and know how to go about it. This is point. I've raised this issue and it's on record. I've raised this issue and it's on record. It's on record. It's on record. It's on record. Distinguished, distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, please. Senator Mao, Rabbani, you came on the point of Odanga, uh, Oda 14A. Uh, I think the issues you raised really, as you rightly said, I think there are questions that they should want to put before them, and not as a privilege. So, on the, way, on the point of order you've come in, I thought you have to put that on the point of order. Now, if you if you if you put up your hand, you want to raise a question, then I'll I'll try as much as possible to recognize you so that you can put the question. I think there are some already. There are some questions already been put forward uh, to you by uh, by um, Senator uh, Barrow. If you can answer that uh, question for Senator Barrow. Yes, the question by Senator Barrow talked about uh, the solid mineral sector. We have regulations that talk about the derivation of revenue from the solid mineral sector. And this is coordinated by the Mining Cadastro Office. The issue of reducing or minimizing the loss of royalties 
Well, when you talk of royalties, you are talking about that you have the community that are housing or hosting solid mineral investment. And this is the reason that the solid mineral ministry, in conjunction with the mining cadastral office, has come out of standard agreement for the derivation of this revenue. So all that is required is for the operator to be sincere enough to the communities and for the communities also to be alert enough to their approval so that nobody escapes with the expected agreement. Secondly, we talk about generating more revenue from the solid mineral sector. If there are more investments in the solid mineral sector, if there are more investments in the solid mineral sector, so will the revenue uh, uh, increase. So all we may need here is the necessary climate or uh, investment environment to attract more of the investors, whether they are local or foreign. Is it, is, is it the wish of the Senate that the money take a bit now? No, no, you can take your leave. Senator Fabi, what's going on there? Neither of the senators. Order! <coughs> Mr. President, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, Having had uh, gone through this uh, very long day, I want to again apologize. I want to again apologize. And uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I still want to clear one thing so that we don't put ourselves in the issue of public uh, declaration of assets is covered by the Constitution. The fifth setting of the Constitution requires. Section, section, the fifth schedule, I read, I read. The rule. The rule. You may wish to report progress to the chair. Minority leader. Are you supporting? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Of course, you know, I will. Yeah, I want to take on the motion that uh, the house should uh, be done to the chairman. Uh, and I take it on. Distinguished colleagues, the Senate in the Committee of the Whole presumed consideration of the Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Federation for the confirmation of nominees for appointment as Ministers of the Government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria.
The following nominees answered questions from distinguished senators on a number of topical national issues and their CV. Adewale Isaac Olonjo, Honorable Bawa Wari, Honorable Jeffrey Onyema, Zainab S. Ahmed, Mansur Mohamed Danali, and Sani Sani Uguru. Further consultation hearings on other nominees deferred to the next legislative day. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Whole? Distinguished colleagues, this distinguished Senate is accordingly adjourned to Wednesday, 28th October 2015 at 10 a.m. from.